Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 33 of The Nooner. Got a few people popping in right now. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate the uh, favors and the restreams. Welcome to episode 33 of the Nooner. Today we're going to be talking about the two most important weapons against terrorism. Thought that would be a fitting topic for September 11th. Just waiting on a few more people to show up. All right, so hey, welcome, welcome. Today is episode 33 of The Nooner. I am your host, David Bradley. This is The Nooner. You are turning, uh, you're catching me live every single Monday through Friday. I'm coming in at 12 o'clock noon, Pacific Standard Time, and I'm going to be dropping noontime nuggets about either sales, business, or life. And again, like I said earlier, today we're going to be talking about the two most important weapons against terrorism. Um... But who am I? Who's this guy that's talking with you? Uh, my name's David Bradley. I'm a sales and marketing manager with Grant Cardone. I've uh, been doing that since March of 2011. Uh, Grant's content took me from barely surviving in sales to thriving in it. So when I got a chance to give that to other people, I'm all in. So what do we do at Cardone Training Technologies? We literally go into companies and we help companies find and handle missed opportunity, usually to the tune of 15 to 30 percent. So if you've got a company, you're in business, and you've got a challenge, uh, you want to see production increase in your company, usually to the tune of 15 to 30 percent, reach out to me, David at GrantCardone.com, and I can show you exactly how to do that. Got a few more people popping in, so thank you for being here and welcome. Uh, this is episode 33 of The Nooner. I'm your host, David Bradley, dropping noontime nuggets about sales, business, and or life. Uh, today we're going to be talking about two most important weapons against terrorism. Fitting topic, right? Uh, a couple other things about me is I am the author of a book called How to Stop Smoking Without Killing Anyone. I smoked cigarettes for uh, just over 15 years. Hey, Carly. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Uh, tuning in live to the Nooner. Nice to have you. Thank you so much. Um, smoked cigarettes for 15 years. Finally figured out a way to stop smoking by not quitting. What's he talking about? Exactly. Check out a website called stopdon'tquit.com. If you're hooked on these things or you know somebody who is and it's time to stop, check that out. I got a solution for you. Uh, third thing, I'm the founder of a hashtag called Rich Man's Gym. Now, um, this will be a book very soon, but it's about home-based strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. You don't have to go to the gym to get in the best shape of your life, and you want to use your time to, of exercise to literally create a stronger body, but also stronger mind and spirit. Hey, Carly. <laughs> All right, so today, uh, again, I'm going to be talking about the two most important weapons against terrorism. This is uh, September 11th, uh, 14 years ago. Not only did the nation change, but we changed as Americans, and not by choice. So um, this is one of those days. It's like um, December 7th or November 22nd, right, where, uh, I mean, the whole deal changed. Um, it's one of those days that changed the nation. It's also one of those days where we changed as Americans. Um, we are not the same people that we used to be. So, you know, we all, you know, everybody remembers where they were, how they found out, right? We all remember those things. Dealer Capital, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, we all remember where we were, what happened. Like, I remember for me, uh, I'm on the West Coast. It was, uh, you know, early in the morning, like 6 a.m., right? Cell phones start blowing up, pagers start going off. Yeah, it was that long ago. Pagers start going off. Home phone starts ringing. Um, you know, I looked at my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and I said, turn on the TV. We just knew. And when everybody's communication device blows up, something's going down, right? So, and we sat there in her apartment and watched that day progress. So... You know, there, there may be some people that are actually on the stream right now that were there or in New York or in D.C. as it went down. And, you know, the, the thing to think with now, 14 years later, is what else 
what else happened, you know, on that day. So for starters, we are we were thrown like full force into this, you know, war on terror. Um, we're fully awakened now. There's no question that there are people out there that want to hurt us, that do not agree with our way of life, and that they are gunning for our destruction. Like, this isn't just a, a group of zealots over on CNN in some remote Middle Eastern country uh, doing the Humpty Dance on the American flag. This is real now. This is on our soil. Right? Shit just got real, as they say. Okay? So, but the thing that I'm thinking with is like, how, how, do, you, how do you fight a war on on terror it's a word right if if i'm going to fight a, another man right i that's tangible i can fight you if i have a group and we're going to fight another group i can fight a group I, I can if i'm a country i can fight another country but how do you fight terror okay so i don't know so i went and i looked up the word terror and I looked at what is the opposite of terror and I found some interesting words I found words like confidence assurance calm happiness cheer glee joy so how do you fight a war on terror well your weaponry must be unconventional you fight terror with confidence assurance calm glee Joy, happiness, okay? And I think there's two key weapons. Two key weapons to fighting terrorism. And my concern is in this country now that not only are these weapons underutilized, but we're running low on ammo. Okay, and these two weapons are love and unity. Love and unity. Hey, Lydia, thank you for joining us. I'm talking about the two most important weapons against terrorism. And right now, what I'm saying is that those two weapons are love and unity. So think about this for a second. After the attacks, ground zero, what, went, what was happening? Who came running to help? Who were these people coming from all over? These were more than just first responders. These were more than just volunteers. These were Americans. The people digging through the, the rubble on 9-11 were Americans. They were Americans and nobody cared about the color of another person's skin, about the religion that they were, about their sexual orientation. Nobody gave a shit. They were just happy to be next to a fellow American, helping and serving. So, and my question for you now, 14 years later, is why did 3,000 some odd people, and then if not more after the fact, okay, have to give their lives for us as a nation to unite? And then more importantly, why do we now still 14 years later, allow ourselves as a nation to be ununited, to be divided. Because that's what they want, the terrorists, right? Mm. What comes after divide? Divide and what? Conquer, okay? That's right. As a nation, we need to dig deep and we need to unite. That, my friends, is how you fight terrorism. Okay? Remember, we are the United States of America. Okay? And we don't need planes flying into buildings and death and destruction to be able to recognize our brother when we look into the eyes of another human being. Okay, so the second weapon is love. This is what fuels the unity. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty 
and justice for all. All. I'm going to say that again. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Except the Jews. Wait, it didn't say that. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Except black people. That's not in there. Except homosexuals. That's not in there. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay? Just love people. That's all. You don't have to agree with them to love them. You don't have to... Does that make sense? You don't have to agree with somebody to love them. You don't have to follow their their plan of life. You don't have to worship their God. You don't have to do any of that stuff to love somebody. Okay? Listen to this quote. The guy is named Hans Urs von Balthasar, Catholic priest from Germany. He says... Even if unity of faith is not possible, a unity of love is. Okay, so there's your message on September 11th. Even if a unity of faith is not possible, a unity of love is. Okay, so now keep in mind, I just want to get this straight. I'm not saying by any way, shape, or form that we need to go hug it out with ISIS or ISIL or Al-Qaeda or whatever rogue terrorist nation is gunning for our destruction. We don't, you, you, that, that's like hugging, it's like trying to hug a rabid dog, okay? It just doesn't end well. It doesn't work. But what I am suggesting is that as a nation, uh, we unite as one force of unique individuals with full tolerance for all people. Okay? So again, what I'm suggesting is that we unite as a nation, as one force of unique individuals with full tolerance for all people. Okay? So I'm going to drop some quotes on love from different religions. I won't tell you what religions they are until the end. You ready? A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. Hatred does not cease to be hatred, but only by love. This is the eternal rule. Hatred does not cease to be hatred, but only by love. This is the eternal rule. You will not enter paradise until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Let me guide you to something in the doing of which you will love one another. Give a greeting to everyone among you. Okay, so the first one came from Jesus Christ. The second one most likely was Moses. That's right out of the Torah. It's from the book of Leviticus. The third one was Buddha. And you know who the fourth one was? The prophet Muhammad. Okay, so how do we win a war on terror? We unite as a nation and we love one another. Okay, I want you guys to treat love as a verb. It's an action. It's something that you do long before you get the feeling. Be loving. Okay? And yes, if, if, if anybody out there is watching this right now and they're thinking, uh, hey, Dave, I'm with you, man, but it's a little bit more complicated than that, then yeah, you know what? You're totally right. Couldn't agree with you more. It is a lot more complicated than that. But where do you start, man? Where do you start? I mean, it's all very confusing, isn't it? It's very complicated, but you got to start somewhere. So why wouldn't you just start by following some of this simple advice from these prophets, people that were sent to this planet by God to help us be more God-like? And God is love. Okay? So be more loving. Find the courage to be a united front. 
stand next to your fellow Americans. As an American, be human. Okay, and not just for today, because it's September 11th. Do this every day. Be a part, like be a part of the United States. Love your brother and your sister and help your fellow man. Okay? So that's the nooner for September 11th. Be united, love. Okay? I hope that touched you in some way. I hope that had a message for you. Um, I, I hope it added some perspective to today. Uh, next week, Monday... Uh, I will not be, Monday through Wednesday, I won't be doing the nooner. I'm taking uh, three days off. My father is getting a new aortic valve uh, on Monday. So if those of you uh, are, those of you that are spiritual, if you could put some good vibes, some good juju, some good mojo, prayers, thoughts, energy into the universe for a very safe and successful procedure, that would be great. I'm very confident it's going to go well. Uh, the guy doing the job has done it like 7,000 times. So clearly he's on, he's on it. Um, what else? But I'll be back next Thursday, the 17th, full steam ahead, right? Back with Nooners. Between then and, and uh, Monday, Wednesday, and uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I will post uh, my three favorite episodes at noon. So for those of you that are regulars here, uh, you won't feel like you're missing out. All right? So again, I'm David Bradley. I'm your host of the Nooner. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate the restream, Laura. Um, if you want reruns of this, you want to see the repeat, broadcasts are up on youtube.com slash Cardone Solutions. There's a playlist over there called The Nooner. Let's go out on a good, funky note. All right, send me a tweet at davidrbradley.com. I want to know what you got out of today's Nooner. You got suggestions, comments, concerns, complaints, praise. Send it out at davidrbradley.com. It's Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be united. Love your brother. See you next week.